friends! Welcome to my channel! If you're new here, hi, I'm Jenna. I love to crochet plushies. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back! For today's video, we are going to be talking about how you can make and sell your own products and start your own business. So I have a bunch of videos on my channel already that cover this same topic, but for today's video, I really want to dive deep into how to actually make the products and how you can sell them. We're going to specifically go over pricing and inventory and figuring out what to sell and really dive deep into the different income streams that you can have as a crochet business and I guess as a business in general. For anyone new here, I personally run a crochet business on Etsy and I have my own website. So a lot of things that I talk about in this video will be crochet focused, but can also also probably be applied to other businesses. But all right, with that, let's jump into today's video. All right, so to begin, let's cover what I personally sell as a crochet business. When you first hear the word crochet business, you probably think that I only sell crochet plushies or crochet products, and that actually isn't the case. When I first started my business back in 2021, I did only sell physical crochet plushies, but I found out the hard way that that is just not sustainable. I've made a lot of friends in the crochet community, and I think that's something that we can all agree on, is that crochet is such a manual and labor-intensive of job and at the end of the day you're only one person behind the business so it's super hard and taxing to just sell physical crochet products and in the long run you're really limiting yourself and your business so to this day I do still sell physical crochet plushies but I have since branched out and have a few different income streams for my crochet business and this has really allowed me to expand my business and tap into areas that I didn't really necessarily think about when I first started such as social media growth and marketing and paid collaboration but we'll get into that in a second. So I wanted to point out real quick that my shop is typically a made-to-order shop. So all of the plushies that I'm willing to make are listed on my Etsy. So when a customer wants to buy one, they will simply just go on my Etsy, place the order, and then I will go ahead on my end and make that plushie specifically for them. So I don't have a bunch of inventory of plushies that I have laying around. Whenever a customer places an order, I go ahead and make it on my end. There's also another business model that you can follow, which is called Made to Stock. That is where you do specific drops and you'll make all of your inventory ahead of time and then you'll list it on your website at a certain date and then people who are interested in buying those products can go on and buy them directly from your website. This business model is great if you want to explore different patterns and kind of make whatever you feel like making and then offer it up for sale and have whoever's interested in buying it will buy it. I personally chose the made to order business model just because I thought it would attract more customers since not a lot of crocheters do operate as made to order and I think that has ultimately led to some of my success of my shop just because my shop is always open and people can place orders whenever they feel like it versus waiting for a specific date to get the plushies during the drop period. I will say in the past year my business has definitely grown and I have expanded to different income streams so my shop has been closed now for a few months and I'm honestly rethinking my business model. I think maybe I will want to switch over to made to stock but we'll see. I'm still trying to figure it out. So in addition to just physical plushies, I've also introduced PDF digital patterns, and patterns have become a really integral part of my business model. The great thing about patterns is that once you create the pattern and finalize it and post it online for sale, you can just sit back and relax. It's all passive after that. You put in the majority of the time and effort up front when creating a pattern, and then you're able to reap the benefits, you know, in the long run. And that is what was super attractive to me to kind of get into pattern designing, just because that meant I didn't need to keep making orders and holding myself to crocheting every day and it allowed me to have a lot more free time which in turn lets me you know create new videos make new plushies and it just gives me time back also sorry they're doing lawn work outside and I don't know if the camera is picking up the sound so sorry about that if you can hear it and then the last product that I offer is brand deals so brand deals isn't necessarily a product per se but it is a service that I offer as part of my crochet business I feel like a lot of you already know what brand deals are but just to sum it up it's when a brand wants to work with you and they will pay you in exchange for you making a video for them whether it's like 30 second long a minute long etc and you will go ahead and talk about that brand in like your YouTube video or like you'll post an Instagram reel or YouTube short but you're basically making content for them and advertising for them through your videos or your social media platforms so to summarize those are the three streams of income and products that I offer through my crochet business. 
like I said earlier, although I'm talking from a crochet perspective, I think any business could have those three streams of income, physical products, digital products, and brand deals. So definitely just keep that in mind as we go through this video. But I just wanted to emphasize again how important it is to have different streams of income. That way you don't necessarily have to burn yourself out physically making products and fulfilling orders and doing all of that stuff that definitely takes up a lot of time and energy. It definitely pays off to have some sort of passive income stream. So when you're reflecting and thinking about your own business, try to ask yourself, what do your customers really want from you? I think in the beginning, it makes sense to only offer physical products because most of the time, that's what people want. They want to buy something and physically receive it, or they want something that you physically make, such as your art, plushies, etc. But as time goes on and you start building your brand and building your reputation, people start wanting more of you. And I know that kind of sounds weird, but in a way they start becoming attracted to your brand and want more and more of it. So that's when you can branch out and start offering maybe like digital products. So in my case, my designs, my patterns, that's what I started selling because I noticed people started following me and liking me for my specific designs, my specific aesthetic. And if you're not in the crochet space and you're not into making patterns, I know some other other businesses offer digital downloads such as like cute wallpaper that they design, ebooks where they kind of talk about like their journey or give you tips on how to start your own business for example or kind of like their story kind of thing. So like the list goes on and on and when you start thinking about those digital products it really does come down to like what business line you're in. And then lastly brand deals, I feel like that will be the last income stream that you'll start incorporating as you start growing and getting a following. I think I got my first brand deal when I first got monetized on YouTube. YouTube, so when I had around a thousand subscribers and I was really shocked by that I was shocked that a brand wanted to work with me with like so little subscribers So definitely don't get discouraged like you do not have to have hundreds and thousands of subscribers and followers to get brand deals And people always ask me how I usually get my brand deals and honestly, I just let the brands come to me I feel like there are so many brands out there that have their own marketing teams that go and scout out people So make sure you have your contact information on every video that you post in your bio etc so brands know where to contact you but then it also never hurts to reach out to brands directly and just kind of like give your elevator pitch and say like hey I would love to work with you I love your products because you never know and I've heard a lot of success stories from people directly reaching out I will say I have never really gotten a brand deal off of Instagram and it's so funny because I have the most followers and my biggest following on Instagram but Instagram has brought me like nothing all of my brand deals have been through YouTube and I feel like a big part of that is because people get to see your personality and kind of see how you interact with others so I think brands do like that like personal aspect but I know brand deals are also big on Instagram so maybe I just am not tapping into that strategy but brand deals are a great way to work with your favorite brands and even get some free perks such as like yarn in my case or if you're a beauty creator or a lifestyle vlogger I know they get so much free PR so that's definitely something to try to tap into Okay, let's move on to the next section, which talks about how you can actually sell your products online. So I mentioned this earlier in the video, but when I first started my business, I sold strictly on Etsy. I love the Etsy platform because it makes it so easy for beginners to really get started and start selling online. You don't need any coding. It's super straightforward to set up your own listing, to set up your own shop, and it doesn't really take a lot of money initially to start up. Etsy charges 20 cents per listing, so you really aren't investing too much into you know actually listing your stuff online yes there are a bunch of Etsy fees and all of that stuff that will come out of your profits but I will say the organic traffic that Etsy brings is priceless especially in the beginning the more traffic you get to your shop means the better the chances of getting a sale and that is why I always recommend Etsy for complete beginners it just gives you such a good audience to work with versus if you were just starting up on your standalone website with that being said though I have recently launched my own website and I run it in tandem with my Etsy store. I will say that I do not market my website at all. I just kind of like have it up there in my link tree and if people want to go shop through my website, they can. To this day, I still get the majority of my sales through Etsy and I honestly think it's because Etsy just has such a great audience and people just find me organically through Etsy still to this day. I will say having my own website is great though because you get to design it exactly how you want it and it really makes it seem like your brand is 
is like legitimate and standalone. So when you're thinking about creating your own website, you'll need two important things, a domain name and a website builder. When selling online, your domain name is one of the most important tools in your tool belt because this is how you will actually connect with your customers and sell them your products. Think of it as your online address because this is what people will have to type in to actually find your store and pull it up. So when you're thinking about what your domain name should be, it can definitely be overwhelming. I personally was very overwhelmed by this process. The best tip that I can give you is to look at what other successful businesses are using for their domain name and follow their lead. For example, what does Shakira, Mariah Carey, and Rihanna all have in common? They're all using a dot store domain. A dot store domain will set you apart from your competitors and really help you stand out amongst all the dot coms. Your customers will know immediately that your website is an online store with a dot store domain. But okay, here's where it gets really juicy. With a dot store domain, you actually sell more. A year long study shows that websites with a dot store domain attract a whopping 87% more visitors. I'm totally shook. That is crazy. You also get double the visibility on Google with a dot store domain, which means more eyes on your products, which means more chances for a sale. You even save 12% on cost of conversion with a dot store domain if you're running ads to your store. And aside from all of these amazing facts, I also want to tell you about all the potential savings that you can get. In the beginning stages of launching a business, money is tight and dot store definitely understands that. They actually started a program called Elevate Dot Store to help all online sellers with insane deals and discounts. So when you opt for a dot store domain, you will unlock access to exclusive discounts of up to $2,500 on essential e-commerce tools such as Wix, Vistaprint, Mailchimp, and many more. It's almost like it pays to have a dot store domain. And here's the best part. For a limited time, you can get your own dot store domain for just 99 cents for the first year. Yes, you heard me correct. For under a dollar, you can have the snazziest domain name. Just use the code GENSTORE at checkout and you'll be all set to go. With a dot store domain, you can supercharge your online success and really set your small business on the path to greatness. So as a quick recap, you can sell on Etsy or you could have your own website. There's also a few other ways that you could sell your products. So if you're physically making products, I highly recommend checking out your local farmer's market or church market or any kind of market where you can set up a stand and sell your products in person. This is a great option for people who are just starting out as well, since this allows you to get real time feedback on your products, interact with customers and really start putting yourself out there. This is also great for people who might be underage. I get a lot of questions from younger people asking like, how can I start my own business? I'm only, you know, a teen teenager, etc. If your school has a market going on, that's a great way to introduce your products. Definitely check with your parents though if it's okay with them and if they can help you out. Just because I know sometimes there's market fees and other things that you might need an adult's help with. And lastly, you can sell directly off of Facebook or Instagram. I don't personally recommend this though because I know there are so many scammers out there. A lot of questions that I also receive are people asking like, hey Jenna, I received this message. Do you think it's sketchy? Do you think it's legit? And most of the time I tell people like, no, that is sketchy like do not do that i feel like there are people who successfully sell through facebook and instagram but you just have to be really careful because scammers are getting really creative these days whenever someone messages me on instagram and wants to buy one of my crochet products i always tell them like hey here's my etsy store you can buy it directly through etsy and if they have any problems with that like if they say like oh i can't access etsy or like hey let's do paypal instead automatically red flag goes up in my head like that's sketchy i personally have never done a sale over paypal because i've just heard horror stories about it so try to avoid using paypal like at all costs if you are selling through facebook or instagram i highly recommend doing the actual transaction through etsy or your own website or another trustworthy platform but just try to stay away from paypal unless you actually know the person and you're only selling to like family and friends all right, let's jump into the next section, which is all about inventory, deciding what to sell and how much to sell of it. And I just wanted to preface and say this section is specifically for physical products. With digital products, the beauty of it is that you never have to worry about inventory. It will always be there, just increase it up if you're running low. But for physical products, we need to think about how much of each product you wanna sell and what products you actually wanna make and sell. For me, when I first started, I liked introducing a few different products 
products just so I could gauge how my audience would react to it. So for example, I think I listed like five things for sale on my Etsy when I first started and it simply was just things that I had already made. I didn't really have any like strategy to it. If you want to be more strategic about what you offer for sale, I would definitely hop on Instagram or any of the social media platforms and kind of see what's trending. That's honestly always a safe bet. For example, I think I spoke about this in my past video, but the sad hamster meme, that has been trendy for a while now. And I saw the crochet community hopped onto that trend as well. And people who have been making the sad hamsters, they have been selling out, they have been going viral, they've been doing very, very well. And that's simply because they have been crocheting the sad hamster that has been trending and people have been wanting to buy it. So following the trends is always a great place to start looking in terms of like getting an idea of what to make. Another popular trend right now is dragons. I personally have also jumped on this trend because dragons are just so cute, but they have been super popular lately. And I only know this because I've been browsing Instagram, I've been browsing TikTok, and what do I see? dragons, dragons all over the place. So if you're ever in a rut and not sure what to necessarily make, I always recommend looking at what's trending. That might be controversial, but like, that's my advice. I will say the risk to making trending items is that you never know when like the trend will stop. So you might end up with a lot of inventory of like sad hamsters that you won't be able to sell once the trend dies. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding whether or not to hop on a trend and like make a bunch of plushies of this trending item. When you're also thinking about what items to make to sell, I would recommend making things that you're personally good at. Don't try and make something that is way outside of your comfort zone just because you think it will sell. When I first started out, I definitely could not make a cow to save my life. It was always so bad. Like it always turned out botched. So after a while, I'm just like, Jenna, you should not make cows for a while. And I took a break. <laughs> and honestly, when I look back at my shop's analytics, cows were not a big seller for me. And now it makes sense. It's because they weren't my best product. It wasn't something that I was proud to sell. And I knew it wasn't my best work, yet I listed it anyway. But in a way, it's so nice to use analytics and data to your advantage because you can honestly see how your audience reacts and what they demand from you. So by just looking at analytics, I would be able to see that my cows were my worst sellers. That would kind of signal to me like, okay, let's take a break from cows. And then on the flip side, once you start accumulating, you know, sales and you get those analytics, you can see what your best seller is and kind of tailor your shop to meet those needs. So for example, for me, turtles quickly became a bestseller. I was really good at making turtles, so I was constantly selling them. And then slowly I started incorporating different turtle designs. I started out with velvet turtles, but then I started dabbling into, you know, the chenille turtles, jumbo turtles, mini turtles, sunflower turtles, the list goes on and on. So once you really start finding the product that your customers are demanding from you, you can then branch out and get creative and expand on that product. In terms of inventory, this will all depend on how your shop is operating. For made to order, I would set my inventory at like five. So that meant I wanted to limit my turtle sales at five turtles. And then after that, it will be sold out and no more turtles will be available. I learned this number the hard way. When I first started, I would set my inventory at like 20, I was like, oh, you know, make it as high as possible because I want all of the sales that I can get. But in reality, I was just one person and I totally, you know, burned myself out. I took on way too many orders that I could physically make. And then you get stuck in a place where you're constantly cranking out orders, you're burning yourself out. It's sucking the fun out of it all. So I do not recommend setting your inventory numbers high, especially when it comes to physical plushies. Another important thing to talk about is processing time. If you are doing a made to order shop, I would recommend setting your processing time like one to two weeks. That way it gives you plenty of time to make that order. And if more orders come in and start piling on top of each other, you at least have one to two weeks to work with between orders. That's another lesson I learned the hard way. When I first started, I had my processing time like one to three days. So I would get an order for a turtle and then I would have to make it and ship it out within three days. And then most of the time I got multiple orders. So then all of a sudden I have like 10 orders orders I have to make all within like three days and I was just like ah this is bad so definitely give yourself enough time and set that processing time to a good week or so. Your customers will definitely understand, especially if you put it out there and make it clear like, hey, this is made to order. I am making this by hand as I receive the order. So processing times may be delayed if I have multiple orders in my queue. Please be expected to wait one to two weeks. If you're doing the made to stock option where you're crocheting a bunch of plushies and then selling them at a certain date, 
honestly I don't have too much advice for this because I've never operated this way but from what I've seen it seems like people make a good amount of plushies for their drops I guess you should really ask yourself like realistically how much can you crochet and get done by that drop deadline and then just hold yourself accountable really because at the end of the day it's just how much you can crochet and get done before your drop date and in terms of inventory itself I've seen a lot of people get creative with their drops so like for example if you follow the holidays oh have a Mother's Day drop include a bunch of flowers and cute like Mother's Day items for Christmas have a bunch of Christmas items within that drop so it's cute to have themes whenever you're doing drops it just helps with kind of like figuring out what to make. But the beauty of drops and made to stock is you can make whatever you want, whatever you feel, and then just hope that people will buy it. With the made to stock option, I will say that you don't necessarily need to rely on Etsy to bring in organic traffic for you, just because you're probably going to be marketing this drop already on your social media. So it might make more sense for you to have your own website. That way you don't have to pay all of those Etsy fees and everything on the physical plushies because you're going to be attracting all of the traffic to get those sales. I feel like a lot of people that I follow who do made to stock, they do have their own website and it makes sense since, you know, they know that they're driving all of the traffic. It's not like they need Etsy to drive traffic for their drop. So why pay those fees when you don't need to? Okay, and the last section of this video is going over pricing. Pricing is always such a hot topic because it's always hard to price items, especially items that you make from hand. Again, I'll preface and say this section is focused on crochet items, specifically plushies and physical items. So how I personally price is probably a lot different than what others price, just because the main equation for pricing is how much did you spend on supplies, how long did it take you to make, and what do you want to pay yourself hourly? Those are like the three main parts of like the pricing equation if you want to be technical about it but when I think about pricing I always like to go see what the competition is selling similar items for just because I like to stay competitive and be within a specific range that way I'm not too far out and overcharging or I'm not too far under and undercutting myself I always go to Etsy and look up like oh crochet turtle what are they currently going for there's usually a range so a low range and a high range and then given my demand and my supply I'll kind of to figure out like okay I can only offer you know five turtles so that means they're pretty limited they're pretty hard to get so I can probably charge a bit more since they're so like exclusive and then I'll make sure to price myself on the higher end of that turtle range but if you're just starting out I would say it's really important to price yourself more on the lower end just so you can attract buyers to buy from your shop versus another shop that might be selling the turtles or the plushies at a higher price because in the beginning you want to prioritize getting sales Getting sales will ultimately help build up your shop's reputation. It will help attract more buyers in the future. It could lead to five-star reviews. And this all helps build your brand and your business in the long run. Whenever they talk about businesses starting up, they always talk about how, you know, profits aren't high in the beginning just because you have all the startup costs and I feel like I didn't make a lot of money when I first started my crochet business just because my prices were so low, my supply costs were so high, etc. But you know, fast forward three years, I've accumulated all of this yarn. I have a bunch of patterns that I've already bought. I got much faster at crochet. So all of those factors definitely help decrease my overall supply cost. And that means I get to profit higher. So higher profits definitely will come with time. So don't be scared in the beginning to price yourself a little lower to be competitive with the other people that you are trying to beat out. That's definitely my number one pricing strategy. Look towards the competition and price yourself a little lower if you're starting out. But if you're like me and you're already somewhat established, you've already built up your brand, I would then focus on, you know, how much did your supplies cost and then price yourself higher on that, you know, competitive band to make sure you're maximizing the amount of money that you can make. If you want a specific calculation, I will link down below a pricing tool that I've used in the past if you really want a quantitative way to calculate pricing. I will say though, definitely make sure you're charging what your product is worth. Like, I know so many people, including myself, undercut their prices because they don't think their work is good enough or worth it. But at the end of the day, it definitely is. Any handmade item is worth so much more than something that's not handmade just because of the labor, the time, the effort, the supplies that go into making that item. So definitely try not to undercut yourself. When I said earlier to price yourself a little lower, it just meant price yourself a little lower in like the overall range of what people are offering that product for. But I wouldn't, you know, price 
price something that's worth $20 for like $10 just for the sake of being competitive because then that's just undercutting yourself undercutting your hard work and effort and then it also ends up undercutting everyone else who's trying to sell like a similar product pricing is definitely so hard and nuanced and i definitely am not the one who should be giving all of this advice but this is just my two cents <laughs> i still struggle with pricing to this day and i know it's something that a lot of people struggle with i will also link down below some other pricing tutorials that i think are helpful and that i have personally watched myself so definitely feel free to check them out if you want to expand on the pricing strategies but all right, I think this covers everything that I wanted to include in this video. I hope you guys find these business themed videos helpful. I really wanna try and answer as many of your questions as possible in one video. So hopefully this video did the job, but always feel free to comment down below any questions you guys still may have or try to hit me up on Instagram. I will say I am severely behind on my Instagram DM. So the best way to contact me is down below. I do read all of the comments and I will eventually get back to you. But thank you guys so much for all of your support as always you guys are the best and i hope you have a great rest of your day i'll catch you guys in my next one bye